Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. Um, we're going to just continue here uh, with where we left off, kind of segue from Syria to Turkey. Um, I'm sorry if I mess this word up, I'm going to try it. Is Mirsh to be NATO's Middle East Operations Center? So this, this is something else that uh, was happening about a week ago. Besides these Patriot missiles going to Turkey, NATO's Allied Land Command will begin operations today in Izmir, serving as the Alliance's sole land forces command. All Middle Eastern operations will from here on out be coordinated from this, from this city. So pretty interesting stuff. It goes on as part of a new command structure that will begin operating today. The base will act as the Alliance's sole land forces. It goes on where coordination for troops in Afghanistan and Middle East will be conducted. Approximately 1,000 soldiers will be deployed from or to the base. However, with additional deployments from Spain and Germany, the total number of personnel from the military on the base will reach 1,500. It will have deployed 18% of their total troops to Izmir. So they're taking and shutting down other bases and combining them into a single base. It goes on here, it says some of them have been operating in Heidelberg, Germany since 1955, and uh, lo others located nearby Madrid, Spain, have been combined and moved to the Allied Land Command uh, in Turkey. NATO's air forces will be commanded in Germany, and naval forces will be hosted by England. Turkey and Russia failed to agree on Syria. This is from Al Jazeera. It says unrest in Syria remains a divisive issue as Putin visit Istanbul. That's right, he was visiting there as well his first trip abroad since October. Russia and Turkey, uh, yeah, and actually he was supposed to go there um, before, but that was when uh, Turkey had just started downing Armenian uh, planes, and I actually it was a Russian plane that they had downed first, uh, where they basically was skyjacking. They were skyjacking planes, Turkey was, so uh, international. Again, they're not just supporting terror, they're carrying out terror. So Russia and Turkey cannot agree on how to respond to the Syrian conflict as Russian president who is in Istanbul for talks with the Turkish Prime Minister. Russia and Turkey for a moment cannot find a mutual approach on the methods of how to regulate the situation in Syria, but our assessment of the situation completely coincides. Interesting right here, it says here Erdogan told Putin that Russia should stop supporting the regime of al-Assad. So, and you know, I guess Putin could basically say, well, why don't you stop supporting terrorists and Muslim extremists? Um, and it says here, this is what Putin says, we are, but he didn't say that. He says, we are not defenders of the existing regime in Syria, which to a certain extent you can believe that because Russia has been mostly just talk. They haven't really done much. They've had existing contracts prior to this uh, invasion of Syria, but uh, beyond that they really haven't stepped in. And he says, I've already stated this, we are concerned about something else. We don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. I think what they're talking about is uh, they have a... a they have an interest uh, to uh, make sure that that area is secured. Otherwise, the terrorists will then uh, start to overflow uh, onto Russia's border, which they've already have. Um, but uh, it'll just increase. I, yeah, I referred to that before. Um, it was basically they call them Chechnya rebels, but they're actually like Russia's Al Qaeda, um, whether they Salafist, and um, they're basically backed by Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and all them to wreak havoc in uh, Russia and create instability. Then we have Lebanese army beefs up presence. The Lebanese army beefed up its presence on the Syrian border Monday, a day after shots were fired at their headquarters. On Monday, it says the armed forces arrested this individual, Amun, who allegedly took part in the clashes. He is said to be part of an armed group that smuggles weapons through Syrian rebel fighters. Syrian spokesman flees the country, diplomat says, so who knows if this is really true, right? Syrian foreign ministry spokesman, who was the most public face of Assad's government, it says, <laughs> uprising, I love that, has fled the country, so... Well, I have my doubts about this Reuters article because it says, but Assad's opponents will see the loss of such a high-profile figure, even though they said he had really little influence by the system run mostly by security apparatus in the military, if confirmed as further evidence of a system crumbling from within. So again, this is to put pressure on Assad, even though they're holding strong, they are securing uh, uh, areas of Syria. So this guy actually previously worked at the Syrian embassy in London and just returned to Damascus a year ago. So, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't think he's that die-hard of a of a person. There it says here Russia prepared to evacuate nationals from Syria. 
So this is a big deal. Russia prepared to evacuate nationals from Syria because this is following UN yanking staff from Syria. Well, U.S. says it's planning to take action if chemical weapons threat materializes, which I'm sure they're, Obama's on his knees praying at his bedside, hoping that they, that, they, that they find him or they use him or they get in the hands of the terrorists. The editor's note is pretty interesting. It says, sometimes you can glean information about a situation by those who are involved in it and how they react. Russia and the U.N. are pulling their people out. Does this mean that they have gotten word about a new offensive, or is there concern about the Patriot missile system being deployed? Russian nationals and engineers have been in Syria uh, through all the madness, and now they're to pull everyone out. It appears to me that either Assad will be whisked away, or an entire new development is going on behind the scenes. So the U.N. is pulling 100 foreign staffers. It goes on here, and it says, um, U.N. has temporarily forbidden all field trips. Field trips? What is this, a school trip into Syria for Damascus? For as long as international humanitarian law is not fully observed by all parties. They're talking about the rebels, free, or free Syrian army. Um, the thing is, is that when the United Nations was there, uh, they would actually be with the Syrian government army forces t t for protection. And um, usually when they got hurt or there was just too much violence, it was on the hands of the, of the rebels. So just like the ceasefire with Israel and Palestine, what happened? Well, Israel assassinated Hamas leader right when a ceasefire, and, uh, or not a ceasefire, but a peace negotiation was, was, was basically drafted, about to be signed. And then they, they assassinated the Hamas leader and then everything sparked off. And Israel played the big, uh, the big victim and said, oh, we're being attacked. So... Uh, same thing with Syria. Remember that whole thing about the uh, the peace negotiation? There's supposed to be a couple of days of, uh, of ceasefire. Well, guess who ruined it? Well, they didn't really ruin it. They never actually conceded to a ceasefire. Talking about the Western-backed rebel terrorists. They All right, then next up, thousands of jihadists joining Syrian rebels. Radical clerics are calling on jihadists to join the fight against Assad, ironically, with U.S. help. More and more Islamic jihadists or holy warriors are joining the rebellion in Syria, like I said, it's not really a rebellion, it's an invasion by foreign mercenaries and terrorists in Syria to overthrow the government of Assad following the advice of radical clerics and other leaders of terrorist networks. The afterlife is the only thing that matters to me, and I can only reach it by waging jihad, a rebel fighter in Syria said. So uh, a fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy estimates there could be up to 3,000 foreign jihadists fighting in Syria. According to U.S. officials and Middle East diplomats speaking to the New York Times, most of the arms shipped at the behest of Saudi Arabia and Qatar to supply Syrian rebel groups fighting against Assad are going to hardline Islamic jihadists. And they they know this. They, they understand this. The evidence is mounting that Syria has become a magnet for Sunni extremists. So it's like they put all the, hand, all the weapons in the hands of all of the uh, tribes or sects of tribes in Libya, um, all the ones that were... Uh, basically not with Gaddafi's or other ones in other areas um, they put the hands in their hands I think they were mostly from Misrata and northeast uh, Af uh, Libya and they literally there wasn't even that many yeah there was there was a, there was a decent amount but uh, most of them actually came from ships and boats right off the uh, right off the water and then just stormed west and south and wreaked havoc in Libya until they had the regime change U.S. officials signals end to war against Al-Qaeda. So we've heard this before, right? It says U.S. must prepare for a time when it no longer is at war with Al-Qaeda. Well, yeah, I guess when you're working with them and supplying them with weapons, uh, you might want to work with them. When sweeping legal powers ushered in after September 11th, when the Zionists attacked uh, the United States, it was not an, just an inside job. It was a foreign attack from a foreign nation that we supply, we build up. Most of the money that... Uh, goes to Israel, goes to their military. Most of the military that Israel has is funded by the United States. So go figure that you know go figure that one out. The address by the Pentagon General Counsel Jay Johnson marked the first time a senior U.S. official publicly raised the possibility of an end to the so-called war on terror launched by President Bush. And uh, you know that's the thing. There is no end of the war on terror <laughs> as long as there's people who don't want to uh, be in a Zionist run. Uh, uh, Zionist occupied country and be living under tyranny uh, you know and having bankers uh, basically ruin their lives it's, the war on terror is never going to be ended it isn't especially when the governments themselves are backing most of the, the actual uh, real 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 terrorists 
the ones that strap bombs to them chest and, and do it to, to go to heaven like we were just talking about. So we're saying thousands of jihadists are joining Syrian rebels. Uh, you have U.S. officials saying that uh, they're not going to be fighting against Al-Qaeda anymore. Well, it says Al-Qaeda linked group uh, Syria rebels once denied now key to anti-Assad victory. So kind of a weird headline, but it says that uh, this group that took responsibility for suicide bombings and, and car bombs, and like I said, they were bombing churches and, and schools and everything. Near, nearly a year later, uh, one of these individuals or this group, which U.S. officials believe has links to Al-Qaeda, has become essential to the frontline operations of the rebels fighting to topple Assad. The prominence of Nusra in the rebel cause worries U.S. and other Western officials who say its operations rely on the same people and tactics that fueled Al-Qaeda in Iraq Many of these fighters, they say are many are Syrians, and I don't think they're even Syrians. Most of them are from Saudi Arabia, who uh, say they fought with Al-Qaeda in Iraq, in which waged a bloody and violent campaign against U.S. Uh, troops. Played for suicide and car bombings that killed hundreds of Iraqis since U.S. troops left. So just to reiterate, Al-Qaeda-style rebels key to civil war, long spurned by other rebel factions, Al Nasra front and center on battlefield. Oh yeah, let's not forget they're the ones that have been killing journalists and burning TV stations as well. Interesting, just like what happened with Israel in the Gaza operation recently. I wonder if they get their tactics from them. I wonder if they're the ones that are actually heading it up. So here we go, as far as a post-Assad era and what the West is using as far as using terrorists and extremists, Muslim extremists, to, uh, to get a regime change by any means necessary. It says, it's going to be a tough uh, sell, but comments from the group insisting that they see no need for elections because they assume the vast majority of Syrians would be fine with a harsh brand of Sharia law could easily be shifted into the sort of single candidate uh, vote that the U.S. and others have found so palatable in post-revolution Yemen. Like I said, it's a shithole right now in Yemen. I'm not saying it was the greatest place before, but they had tourism, they had an economy and everything, and you look at the pictures that I showed recently, it's a hellhole. And now you have Al-Qaeda there uh, cutting people's heads off and stuff like that in Libya. They're trying to push Sharia law. And in fact, the people, most of the fighters, uh, Muslim extremists inside Syria, working along with the West, say publicly what they want is a theocracy, impose Sharia law, and that's what they're going to get. So, And most of the Syrians there, there now are moderate, and they don't want that. And they were just about to get actual reforms coming up in the next year or two. Globalist RAG gives two cheers for terrorism. Remember this from August 2012. Foreign, foreign Policy published a recent article literally titled Two Cheers for the Syrian Islamists. Conceding that the Syrian government would not be in the trouble it is in today were it not for the Islamists. Revealing what the West and the media uh, whores or houses have attempted but failed at pointing out that the violence in Syria is the work of sectarian extremists and not pro-democracy activists. So there's the actual title from right there. So it's no surprise that uh, since the uh, Zionist attack, the United States calling it 9-11, uh, terrorist attacks have quadrupled since 9-11, but deaths are falling. So I guess that means the war on terror and all the apparatuses that took away whatever freedoms you had left uh, legitimizes it. Go figure, the Global Terrorism Index finds that the war on terror has actually contributed to an increase in terrorism. Since terrorist activity initially fell after 9-11, then escalated dramatically after the U.S. invaded Iraq. Of course, like I said, this was all United States soldiers working for the Zionists. In fact, they had Israeli Mossad and soldiers and sharpshooters and snipers firing on U.S. soldiers. I mean, it's insane. And now they got what they want in Istanbul. I mean, everything's working. I mean, every, it's hard to say that, that things really change for the better because it seems like everything, including this whole Palestinian thing, getting a statehood, I, I'm sure that was planned to or part of the program. So he admits that foreign powers shouldn't rush into areas like Syria where the rebellion has led to an increase in terrorism because unless foreign intervention brings the conflict to an end quickly, terrorist attacks could increase further. And another reason for these terrorist uh, attacks and people hating us is because, well, our fingerprints, right? Our footprint all over the country, our U.S. bases, the empire, right? Senator Graham, a neocon and Zionist, slams light footprint of U.S. security ride, says lack of security could mean more Benghazis. So instead of just getting the hell out of there and reducing your presence, uh, you, you, you need to increase it, see? Another Zionist that I just talked about, Feinstein Commission's report on housing Guantanamo Bay detainees in the U.S. calls it a viable option, so yeah. Do we need a second Gitmo? Well, we already have one in North Carolina. 
guards are torturing inmates with hot sauce and actually forcing them to kiss snakes, among other things. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.